Welcome to Inequality Principle. This is Mike Sai. Got my best friend right here, Yohani Toe. Say what's up, Yohani. What's up? Today we're having a discussion on hate speech and whether hate speech is actually good speech. So if you've been watching recently on the news, the protest that's been going on. <laughs> A lot of people are getting arrested for things that don't seem to qualify enough for the arrest. And people are often stating anti-Semitism for the reason they are being arrested. I think this is stupid reasons. I think the fact you arrest people for anti-Semitism in more ways makes their beliefs that the Jewish people are in charge of the media, in charge of the police, and in charge of the monetary system. And what they say goes, it leads more credence to that belief that you can send police after people for doing things that are protected under the First Amendment right. What is your opinion on this topic? I don't know. I haven't been watching the video too much, but I don't believe there's such a thing called hate speech. I mean, it's freedom of speech, First Amendment rights. So if people are just protesting, sitting outside camps and just saying whatever they want about what Palestine is, Israel crap, mm-hmm. saying what they want, I mean, I don't understand why they're getting arrested like that. They should tell camps on that. I mean, people set up stands and everything and have debates like Steven Crowder would do. Mm-hmm. Charlie, or uh, whatever the dude's name, Charlie something would do, sit out there and have conversations. They don't get kicked off or arrested. So why these people are getting arrested, I don't know. Yeah, it's very strange. It's very strange. There's never been a time period, especially when we were coming out of 2020, when you had the George Floyd riots. And everybody was running around, building chop chad zones, taking over police stations, burning down businesses, looting, robbing, killing, murdering, pillaging. It was all out chaos. And the cops couldn't do nothing. We weren't trying to arrest nobody. And this was in the middle of COVID. This said one of the worst pandemics ever where everybody had to be locked down. This was allowed to continue. But this is post COVID and nobody's looting and nobody's robbing and nobody's trying to hurt anyone. And they're shutting it down immediately with tear gas and physical force. It's kind of strange. And now we're going on, what, the third, fourth day of it? It's kind of strange behavior. This is why Candace Owens or whatever, I guess, allegedly mm-hmm. got left the Daily Wire, something like that. I know she hasn't come out with a statement or anything, right? Why she left? Or- Matt Walsh literally just came out with a statement saying the same thing. And him and Ben Shapiro are kind of going through a whole... Thing. So Ben Shapiro seems to me like somebody who can dish out the bullying, but as soon as the bullying comes towards him or his perspective of his his protected class, he becomes the ultra liberal. You can't say these things. It's hate speech person. Um, hate speech doesn't exist, and hate speech is an alarm to recognize what people think of your group and your group's behavior. And how they are engaging with the world. And maybe you should listen to the hate speech and say, is there any pattern going on that may dictate why they would believe this thing? Right. So if there's bombs going off in a certain part of the world and a lot of children are dying and they are criticizing you for that, it's not hate speech to point that out. You you, you can comment. Pretty much good. I think you're going to What's the deal with Ben Shapiro and Matt Walsh? Then? What are they going at about? Well, Matt Walsh pretty much said. Because Matt you, Walsh is Christian, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. He said you can't arrest somebody for anti Semitism. It doesn't make any sense. He's mm-hmm. he's he's pretty much in line with, with every. Ben Shapiro disagrees with that? He hasn't said anything yet, not from what I've seen, but knowing the rift it caused between him and Candace Owens for him to, her taking a different position on the Daily Wire. We'll see how it goes down. Um, well, Ben Shapiro is what, the co-owner or owner, part owner, whatever. So, I mean, overall, yeah, he's supposed to have like a free speech platform. But <laughs> at the end of the day, if he doesn't want to Excuse say me. things on his platform, then it shows you how but he's, open he is about free speech. Yeah, exactly. It's the, it's the hypocrisy. You need to have the ability to criticize. Just because you, your people went through the Holocaust doesn't mean that you're immune to criticism. You guys can no longer do any wrong in the world. You're not above criticism. It's something that Ben Shapiro needs to learn, needs to understand. 
what makes you think he's saying he's not he's above criticism? All he's saying is I got well nobody knows what happened between him and Candace Owens, but if he's saying he doesn't want a certain type of talk on his platform, he's not in the wrong to say that. It might be hypocritical since he's a free speech advocate, but I mean, technically he's not in the wrong to say that, right? I don't think if you're a purveyor's free speech, you can decide what type of talk you want on your platform. So if it's still conservative in value, like you're not promoting hedonism, you know, or genital mutilation, Mm -hmm. that's one thing. But if you just have a different political opinion based off of a very complex, a very complex geopolitical situation, which as Christians, we really have no stake in because we don't really know the intrinsic nature of the conflict between what's going on in the area. We have no ties to it, really. We just say, just become Christian, love Jesus, and stop fighting. <laughs> you know, that that would be essentially our answer. But there's, it, it's, it's, it will never be solved from what I've seen. And we just see murder and countless death. And the, what a, I have, Muslim friends, and I heard what Jewish people say, and regardless of who they are, they always take each other's side. The Muslims support the Muslims, the Jews support the Jews, and anything you say not aligned to that side, they immediately get antagonistic towards you. So, well, it's kind of hard to like separate yourself, especially if you're growing up in certain beliefs, certain systems that you apply to your life. So, I think, I mean, even everyone could have some type of shade over their eyes. So, when it comes to there's certain views that they have, you know, tied to the views of their heart being attacked, you know, they're going to retaliate such a way. And, you know, maybe that's somewhat a way, I mean, I'm not sure who the other owner is, if they're sure or if he's Jewish or not, but possibly that's how they felt with Candace Owens, possibly that's how they're leaning towards with Matt Walsh. So, maybe as of right now, they just have that blindfold over their eyes since they're so attached, they're mostly attached to the situation that, you know, they're not thinking as logically as they would about other situations. I'm not saying it's right or wrong, it's just like, out there that's what's going on there. Yep. So it needs to be an evolution on a daily wire before you lose everything to trying to censor what people can have an opinion on or not go against the Israel agenda. And I saw him say certain things like Ben Shapiro said his loyalty to America hinges on America's loyalty to Israel. As if, if America no longer wanted to support Israel in their conflicts, then he would no longer have an obligation to be supporting of, like, you're American before you're a native Israeli. I don't even know if he's a native Israeli. I don't know how that works, whether you're just born Jewish and then you have access to Israel or... I'm unsure. But their behavior... I don't know how the cops, after they've been shackled, <laughs> they've been neutered for the last four years... They now have the the authority to go out and beat up a bunch of college kids who aren't doing anything, who aren't violent criminals. But we got people robbing. That's specifically, what's happening on the campus? Because I haven't watched. Like, so they've been doing campus campus campuses protests have been going on for like the last twelve days, and I think it started in New York at some campus. And, and what, so Palestinians against uh, Israel or Israel against Palestine? Like, what, so what it's what just side it's just on? people from Pal not from Palestine, but people in support of Palestine are saying free Hamas okay, essentially. Gotcha. So they're like setting up camps, like tents and all this stuff, and they're setting them up. And police will come in and just start mass arresting like hundreds of people. Mm-hmm. And I'm just like, how are y'all mass arresting hundreds of people and y'all ain't doing nothing nowhere else? So they're on public property, right? No, it's so, private. Okay, so it's they're set up on private, a private campus. Right? Mm-hmm. Doesn't the school have the right to send police to come and remove them? The school may have the right, but this has never been a precedent for the last four years is, is essentially what I'm saying. So when we're like talking, I guess when we're comparing this to the George Floyd riots, right, they were in public streets, but except they were, what, let me just, they were destructive, they were destroying property, essentially, they were like, yes. you know, they were blocking, they were blocking interstate, interstate roadways, Yeah, I that's the, not I legal, in a while, like, you know, police weren't interfering more on that, but now that we're in a private location, mm-hmm. you're setting up on private location, mm-hmm. like, if they set up in your backyard, right, the police have a legal obligation to come and remove them, correct? But they don't. Why not? Let's let's put this like on on squatters. You would think that's your private property that they're squatting on, and in California they're not removing them from your property. 
Okay, let's keep this to the school grounds. But I want to keep this at the school grounds. So the well, school grounds, they're on the private we, property of the school grounds. They're not on the public street. Like it's typically like when you see those. I forget the dude's name, but Charlie and Steve Crowder when they set up, mm-hmm. they're like at the school campus, but they're like on some public way. So it's like that. You know, if the campus actually leave, they're still like on some public grounds. Mm-hmm. Uh, to my understanding, right. So these people are setting up camps, not on the public grounds of the campus where you know I could just go by walk my dog and not get looked out. Mm-hmm. They're on some private parts of the campus where they could be legally removed. Sure, maybe. So now they're calling the police to legally remove them, right? Which is in the confines of the law. I don't know. I really don't know. Okay. So. I don't know the the ins and outs. I don't know whether they're on public or pri- private. All I know is the precedent has been set. That people can protest and they won't get arrested for it since 2020. Have these? And, have these? I thought these. There was wasn't there like a big protest for this in New York like I don't know six months ago or something like that where they like took over New York and they weren't getting arrested. I mean, there's a lot of protests that go on. Okay. But I'm stating specifically the ones at college right now where they're shutting down. They stopped the commencement speech at USC because the lady was going to do a pro-Palestine uh, commencement speech, mm-hmm. and. Don't see why you would stop that. They would protest, and hundreds of people are getting arrested on each campus. They're throwing people down in Emory State. They're like throwing down old ladies and putting them in weird arm bars and shooting tear gas. And you're just. Mm-hmm. It seems like they're more attacking them for having an opinion. I think without looking into legality of the like how it's working over there, it's kind of hard to say because I mean we don't know if it's on private or public. What's going on? It's not really about the legality. It's about the level of force that's being used versus what has been appropriate over the last four years, even if they're doing obviously illegal things on private property, whether it's breaking into a target or breaking into a business or burning down streets or burning down cars or, or whatever they were doing that was obviously illegal. They weren't taking action. They took over a police station and then set it on fire and then cordoned off the city and called it Chop Zone. And tried to grow food. And they didn't arrest anybody. People were getting shot inside. And the pol- and the ambulances couldn't go in. Because the police couldn't go in. So. <laughs> this yeah. is, we talk about private property. And I'm talking about. They let World War Z happen within their city. And did nothing for months. That's kind of my point is. If you're going to enforce the law. You guys have been neutered for the last four years. So how come. Your balls immediately drop when something about anti-Semitism is going on. It's not the fact that things are being enforced. If it was being enforced on on both sides equally and you weren't targeting churches in the middle of COVID when they're as far apart as me and you. And they're like, oh, yeah, you're spreading COVID. But these people are destroying cities and nothing's being done. Mm -hmm. Now, oh, anti-Semitism protest. They're not destroying anything. They're just, hey, yo, listen to that. We don't want the war going on. We want to stop funding this. And now it's the tear gas. Now it's it's showing you there's certain people who have certain influence. I don't know who they are. I don't know (laughs) who they are. But there's certain people who have certain influence who are dictating what level of force police are able to go at certain people and the police are compliant. And this and this is what is scary is the complete are the police are following these orders. They are paychecks. following these orders. They need paychecks now. Everybody's a slave to something. So we, we, we're always that close from Nazism being reintroduced, except it won't be under the guise of Nazism. It will be under the guise of controlling hate speech or controlling the rise of internal terrorism or what, whatever they'll call it. And they'll begin implementing these ideas to the police force, even though they don't have this authority. They don't have this outreach, but they'll do it. To make sure they maintain power. Mm-hmm. Yep. You have Benjamin Netanyahu over there talking about what's going on on our campus. In Israel. He's like, they need to stop. I'm like, how are you going to tell Americans what they're doing on the yeah. campus? Now these, and then it happens. Then it happens. He says it in Israel. And then the police act on what he says on our campuses. It's strange. Mm-hmm. It's very strange. And I am the least liberal person. Well, I'm not, I'm not. I'm probably the most liberal person. But I'm the least liberal supporting person in the world in terms of their politics. But I believe they have to protest now because the police overreach is so crazy that the only response to 
their overreach is to make them arrest you again and again to show them how wrong they are. Like when you're throwing a 45, 50 year old woman on the ground because she's standing there. You're like you have to be in the wrong. There has to be something hitting you in the conscience. Are you just that militant? Which state was that happening in? Georgia. Oh, okay. They're beating up old ladies, bro. Georgia. Anything else? Until I actually look into it a little bit more, look into the rules of the school a little bit more, look into the laws that are standing there on the school grounds, see what laws they have. This this know. isn't. Okay. I'm just curious. I'm just curious. The laws I'm aren't what I'm arguing. I'm arguing. I understand what you're, not, I understand what you're arguing. Like it was illegal for the top zone to be put up. It was, but yet it was still put up with no police enforcement. And so mm -hmm. they finally went and bulldozed it over. Mm -hmm. You're saying why now? Why are we enforcing people that are just setting camps and yep. cages and not yep. not doing any violence, not burning down any buildings, mm -hmm. not breaking into the schools? Yeah, why is this? There's yeah. a clear discrepancy. Mm -hmm. And it's done that way because it's an election year. And one of the reasons why you would lose an election is due to st destabilization within the culture. So there's a lot of destabilization going on. That's one of the factors that play into whether somebody's going to lose. So they see that stuff rising. They're like, hmm, we're in the middle of a war. It's not popular. We don't want everything getting out of control and spurring all this chaos before we have to vote at the polls. So they're like, clamp on it, clamp on it. Call it anti-Semitism. Y'all are free speech people. Or we are free speech people, so why do you have the governor in Texas talking about we're not going to stand for anti-Semitism? When did that word start coming out? Was, was that like, I've just been hearing it a lot lately because I know it's directed towards Jewish people, but when did that start being like a whole saying now? They, they always use it as a cover to never face any criticism. Mm -hmm. it's, like, it's like black people use it when they're saying, oh, you're being racist, when they, every time you try to say something about black people, that's true. Mm -hmm. That's what... <laughs> No, See, like I'm gonna be called I'm gonna be called anti-Semitic just for saying what I just said. <laughs> but that's what they do. They hide behind it. I can criticize you and not be anti-Semitic. I just state the truth. All right? That Donald Sterling was a racist owner and he was also Jewish, and he was scared that his Jewish friends would mock him for his girlfriend at the time taking pictures with black people. So that means there were Racist elite Jews who own basketball teams who he didn't want to get embarrassed with, which is a true statement. We just don't know who they are because they forced him to sell his team and not oust anybody who else had the teams, even though we know 14 of the teams of the NBA are owned by Jewish owners. So you can narrow them down and see who's in the circle and find out who they are. It wouldn't be that difficult. But we know this as a fact. So this whole boogeyman, they're trying to see like, oh, this is not all Jewish people. Okay, it's not all of them, but it's the elites and powerful positions who have certain perspectives and influence over things, who have a certain perspective of where they're supposed to exist within the hierarchy of man. And they don't like being criticized, and they don't like being seen, and they don't like being uncovered. I tell you what, it just shows the Daily Wire's true colors, man, that just don't be hurting themselves. I know, what's it called, didn't uh, Ben Shapiro go on Piers Morgan, I guess right after that whole incident, he wasn't even answering, what, but Ben Shapiro's like, lawyer, former lawyer, mm -hmm. so I guess maybe some, he's trying to keep some legal stuff out, that's why he's bringing it up, or he just knows how to stay silent, but yeah, even he was hesitant to even bring up, like, why can't, this, they got rid of Kevin Jones, or why she departed, or mm -hmm. I don't know if she quit, got fired, or how that whole deal worked, but. Yeah, yeah Ben Shapiro, you're losing, that, yeah, it shows, shows true character. You're losing your spine, bro. You gotta be able to get criticized. You buy, you gotta be able to take some, some, some blows, especially when you're trying to run around here like a tyrant because somebody's speaking against your precious Israel. Even God spoke against your Israel because y'all be acting some way sometimes. <laughs> y'all be, y'all be acting up sometimes. Just, just stating, y'all have a nature of doing that. What do you call them? A hard-headed people, a, a stiff-necked people. Y'all almost got obliterated. Like seven times. I'm just saying. <laughs> just saying, Moses saved you. All right, man. That's it. That's it. Inequality Principle, episode six. Thanks for coming, Johanny. It was fun. All right, bro. You got to do it again. I'll have better lighting next time because I don't even know if anybody showed up on this, being honest. <laughs> we'll see.